Hello students, in this lesson, let us study about the crossings, its components and its types. So, we'll see what exactly is a crossing, what are the requirements of crossing. We'll see all the component parts and we'll study the types. There are totally three types of crossing. So, in detail, we'll study each of them. So, to get started with, crossing is nothing but the construction done when two rails of different tracks has to cross each other at a certain angle. This is provided by giving a flangeway clearance between the rails to be crossed and this particular thing is known as your crossing. So, here if you observe this particular junction is called as crossing where the two rails are crossing each other. The name itself is indicating. So, what exactly is the definition? The special form of construction done when two rails of different tracks cross each other at an angle so as to provide flangeway clearance between the rails. to be crossed. So, this is known as what? Your crossing. So, normally this crossing is made up of different pieces of rails. If you observe here, there is one piece of rail, here there is one piece of rail, right? Here there is another piece of rail, here there is another piece of rail. So, how many pieces? Four to five pieces will be there, right? And this will entirely make up a crossing setup. Now, there are certain requirements a crossing should have. without which your crossing will not work in the ideal condition. Okay, so let's see what are the requirements that a ideal crossing should fulfill. The first one is the entire setup of the crossing should be rigid enough so that it withstands your severe vibration. Even when there are severe vibration during the crossing of the trains, it should able to withstand the load coming onto that. So, they basically should be rigid. Next one is your wing rails and nose of crossing this should be made of certain special steel okay or what you can say this should be made of certain alloy steel so that they resist the heavy wear which is coming onto the crossing. Normally in crossing there will be a lot of wear. So in order to resist that the junction of the crossing, the wing rails, this these are nothing but your wing rails, the rails of the crossing are nothing but wing rails, right? And the nose of crossing is nothing but this tip, right? So these both should be made of some special alloy or high strength steel so that they resist your we are especially during the movement of the wheels. Okay, that is one of the major requirement. And the last and main requirement is the nose of your crossing. The nose of crossing should be sufficiently thick. Okay, to take all the stresses occurring at the crossing. So you should not give it very thin. The nose should not be very thin. It should have sufficient thickness. That is one of the important criteria. Okay. Thickness should be sufficient. Right. So, these are the requirements of your crossing. So, there are various crossing components. So, if you want to list one by one, first one is a crossing or it's also called as V piece. Right. So, this is your crossing or the V piece. The second one is a point rail 
here if you observe this is your point rail then the third one is a splice rail so if you observe this is your splice rail next the fourth one is what two wing rail so here if you observe this one is one wing rail this one is the other wing rail okay then fifth one is two check rails here these are your check rails here and here these are your check rails next the sixth one is the chair that is provided between the toe and heel of crossing so between the toe and heel of crossing whatever chair is required to hold them those are also some of the component parts of your crossing so if this is your toe of crossing and this is your heel of crossing so in between these however many chairs are provided to fix the rails those are also components of your crossing then the last one is your distance block or distance block at the throat at the throat nose and heel of crossing so this is your distance block which you are providing at the throat similarly at the heel also you will provide one distance block also at the nose of the crossing that's here you will provide a distance block so these are some of the component parts of the crossing now let us get into the types of crossing so there are basically three types of crossing so let us discuss one by one what are the types so there are three types of crossing so the first one is the acute angle crossing or it is also called as v crossing or it is also called as frog so different names for your acute angle crossing or what v crossing or your frog crossing so these crossings which is formed when the right hand rail of one track crosses the left hand rail of the other track at an acute angle so your right hand rail crosses the left hand rail at acute angle then such type are called as what your acute angle crossing this can be vice versa that is the left hand rail crossing the right hand rail at an acute angle right so what is an acute angle angle which is less than angle lesser than 90 degree you can call it as a acute angle crossing okay so this type of rail is mainly so this type of crossing consists mainly of two point rails and a splice rail a pair of wing rail and a check rail okay so what all this contains a point rail splice rail and pair of wing and check rail so most commonly used in the indian railways okay so where can you see this where can you see this see if you observe this this if you observe this angle is less than 90 degree so it becomes a acute angle crossing here also you can see acute crossing if you observe this is less than 90 degree here this acute angle crossing okay next the second one is your obtuse angle crossing or it is also called as diamond crossing because it will look in the form of diamond so it is simple here what will happen your right hand rail crosses the left hand rail at that is your angle greater than 90 degree will come under obtuse angle crossing now it is also called as diamond crossing why because the shape will look like a diamond so it mainly consists of two acute angles and two obtuse angle crossing okay so two two acute angles and two obtuse angles okay so if you observe this this is an obtuse angle crossing right see this is an obtuse angle crossing this is also an obtuse angle crossing right so if i show this here it is acute angle and here it is acute angle right this entire stuff will be called as what diamond crossing the next and the third one last one is your 
square crossing so here the crossings are at 90 degree here also same or different gauges this will cross at a right angle right angle the two rails will cross at right angle so if you observe these are your square crossings okay also called as right angle crossings now these are not very much commonly used because these under heavy loads this will wear heavy wear will be caused under your impact or moving loads that's the reason this type of crossing is not much used on the main lines especially where your trains move with very heavy speed okay so this is about your crossings requirements components and its types hope you have understood it thank you